Okay, this is going to be uh, miracle number six, and um, this is going to be about how uh, God was able to um, show me that um, taking steroids was a sin, and um, I've uh, I was always into like recreational bodybuilding since like the age of almost like twelve or thirteen. Um, I had like plastic weights and then um, when I uh, was fif 15 uh, I bought I invested in like a big Olympic weight set cast iron to a two inch diameter uh, weights um, it was like $700 at that time uh, which I used the money I had saved uh, my summer job and um, so I had like a multi-bench I could do everything um, so at 15 I started lifting weights um, bodybuilding and then at 16 I lost a lot of all the fat on my body and then just kept lifting and then uh, when I was 18 is when I when I tried taking steroids um, but I only took them for, they really were really hard to get in, um, when I turned 18, which was 1989, and, um, that's when, uh, George Bush the first was pre president, and he, uh, cracked down on them, so they really, they weren't easy to get, now they're everywhere, they're made all over, there's a huge black market for them, and they're, they're so widely accepted now and secretly used so widely available at that time they weren't so I couldn't really do as much as I would have and I never did them after my j junior year in college I just didn't have access to them so in my defense I'll show you what I looked like in so I figure I never did them past 93 and this is what I looked like in 95 and 96. So that's what I looked like after figure six years of, of bodybuilding, lifting weights, um, and then dabbling with steroids, and then um, being off them for a couple of years. And once you're off them a couple of years, there's no effects left. You don't keep what you got. Um, from them, uh, but then in um, I think it was 2001, I bought a little bottle of uh, Deca on the internet, tried that, got some gains, and then um, in 2002, um, I got some more. And I even got some growth hormone, which I thought was um, unattainable until that time. And then I was able to get something called serial stim, which is legitimate. And it was uh, about 500 and some dollars per kit, which was 108 I used. And I got like three kits. I came into some money at that time. So I was really able to transform my physique in a short time. And I'm going to show you, well then, it was in 2004, 2000, I kept using them off and on, and I wanted you to see what it's, the difference between what I looked like in 95, 96, after just being naturally 
uh, built and what I look like after using them to assist me. So you can see there's not a huge size difference, but there's a huge cosmetic difference. So you can see now. Okay, so you can see there's a difference, and if you were into bodybuilding, um, why wouldn't you do them? Why wouldn't you take them? Um, unless you had a really good reason. Um, and that's what this miracle was. I, uh, God was able to get me to stop taking them by convincing me that they were a sin. And um, and being a sin, they cause demons to have access to you. And uh, if you know what demons are, they are invisible entities that are able to affect your mind, your thought processes thereby changing your personality, changing the way you react to the people around you that are important, um, fits of rage, those kinds of things that you regret and you wonder, I don't know what happened, why I you know, got that. Um, you, know, you always have something to apologize to people for. Those are demons. Those are the effects. Uh, everybody thinks that demons are the exorcist being possessed and acting crazy and levitating, your head turning around 360 degrees, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't know that it's demonic possession, but it's they have access and they hinder you and they um, harass you and it's because they have legal grounds when you sin and um, you don't know you have demons, you just know you have these problems and this personality. Um, you could have the best personality, but you know, at, at certain times, this other side of you comes out, that's what the demons do to you. That's how they affect your life, um, affect your relationships, um, affect your, affect everything, every aspect of your life by being able to confuse your, 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 your mind and you become irrational at times and um, that's a good reason not to take drugs um, despite whatever you think they benefit you so um, this is how God the miracle this is the miracle uh, part of the video um, okay um, I, uh, I, I, since I had all that equipment at the age of 15, I never really trained at a gym. I didn't need to. Um, I had everything at home in my basement. And um, when I, the first time I got a house, I, I never had a house until 2004. I had a condo in, 2000, in 1999. And I still was able to use a squat rack because I, I, I had um, squat safety stands, but the first thing I bought when I got my house in a basement with you know a concrete foundation was a squat rack that I put in the basement, and I'll show you a picture of that. And um, so I have really strong legs, as you can see from the photos. And I love that, having that, because that's something no one else had. It's part genetic and part um, effort um, and, you know, dedication. 
uh, I had everything. I had the, uh, I had about 500 pounds of, of weights, the plates. I had obviously 645 so I could load up the, the uh, squat rack. Um, I got up to 405, 8 reps. Um, not naturally, but I got up to 365, 9 reps naturally, just using uh, creatine. I could do 365, 3 reps naturally. 365, 9 reps, creatine. I got up to 405, 8 reps um, with uh, DECA. I didn't use a lot. I wasn't using um, mass amounts. So I think that shows that there's a genetic component there. That I could just using some DECA nandrolone, uh, 400 milligrams a week, that I would be able to get up to 405 eight times in the squat rack. And um, I had accumulated a lot of I I, I would I liked buying them more than I liked using them, and uh, because I didn't want to take a high heavy dosage because I didn't want to lose my hair. I already had like thinning hair, and um, I didn't want to be bald, so. Um, when you can buy them on the internet and you've got the money, you know, you like stocking up on them and seeing them and having them more than you want to put them in your body um, for fear of, you know, you, when you look as good as I did there, you don't really need to look like a bodybuilder if you don't compete. So you kind of just, you know, so I had accumulated a stash and, um, It was, I say conservatively, it was worth about three grand. It's probably worth more than that, but three grand is is, is a good approximation. Um, you know, and I had used uh, growth hormone. I had used IGF one, um, and these things are dangerous. I, uh, they're, I think they're pretty much known for accelerating tumors if you have tumors or cancers. So. Um, Good thing this happened in 2009 when when God showed me that it was sin and I better not do it. And uh, here's how it happened: I was uh, I I remember I was just I was really strong, really lean, 190 pounds at 5'11, no fat. That's pretty pretty good. And uh, I was training. I was working but in my spare time I was training at a boxing gym and obviously lifting at home God never let me compete and I think it's because he won't let me cheat and uh, something always hindered me um, so that I never competed with that drug enhanced body um, and I in my uh, testimony I talked about of July 1st 2007 how God had revealed to me that all steroids and all all drugs including steroids were a sin but nevertheless I you know I continued to do them um, but one by God but one by one God just pretty much started knocking them out boom 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 you know basically something explodes in your face and you don't do it anymore so in the course of uh, training for boxing, I um, freak accident. I was in my basement. I, I had everything in my basement. I had a like an eighty or a hundred pound uh, uh, heavy bag, and uh, and when I was training, sparring in the gym, I was real good. I was real good. I, no one would touch me, and I was just using my left jab and I wouldn't use throw my right and so I wanted to like acclimate myself why won't you throw your right so I so I determined to do 10 rounds just using my right on the bag just basically lining up my jab at the, on the bag and then going in with the right and as I was doing that I tore the tricep um, and then another freak accident I it was really a bad winter 2008 to 2009 I went outside I was running out to the truck 
in front of the house. I slipped on the ice, broke my fall with the same right arm, which really made it even worse. Um, even my trainer at the at the boxing gym, he, he looked at how bruised it was on the outside, and he said, "You mean that nothing? You didn't get hit like." No, there was no external impact, and there wasn't. It was all internal bleeding, um, internal bruising. Um, so um, I had to stop lifting, and uh, at least I couldn't do any pressing, no bench pressing, no shoulder pressing, no tricep pressing, nothing. And by the time I could lift again, when it healed, I actually went to the doctor. I got an MRI. He said, there's nothing wrong with it. I went back. I said, give me another MRI. They gave me another MRI lower. They said, yeah, you're right. It is torn. Um, but he said, but it, I've never seen it tear like that before. He said it tore like a hamstring. It didn't tear, it didn't tear at the um, tendon, but in the middle. And he said it should heal um, without surgery. And you should get 100% of your strength back. Um, and it did heal without surgery, but if I if I got 100% strength back, I don't have the same range of motion. So I went from being able to bench press. Well, right after I was able to start bench pressing again, I could only lift 135, like seven times. And 135 is something you would normally warm up with. Um, I'd get all the way up to like 245. Um, for like f maybe five reps, I could easily do 225, maybe four reps naturally, maybe six reps with creatine, and then, um, you know, so I had a good, you know, physique, but that's not my strength, my strong point, my legs are my strong point, my natural and genetic gift, gift from God, um, but my chest, you can still see, I, I you know, I carved out a pretty decent, physique and um, so now my my this happened this was in um, we're in 2009 now maybe like the spring after the, the winter it had healed and I remember I was in my uh, I mean I'm born again now I'm uh, baptized I uh, um, but I don't know that steroids is a sin. Even though, yeah, 2007 it was revealed to me, I'm still dabbling in them, in bodybuilding. And, and, uh, and I remember I was praying, as I now always did. I prayed a lot um, in the privacy of my home office. Uh, I was on the ground, and I, I started daydreaming, thinking it wouldn't be great to get myself back to that physical shape, like what you saw in the pictures. And then I resolved in my mind uh, that I was going to, okay, I'm going to do another cycle. And I had all this stuff, uh, I had all this Prima Bolin, including the real Prima Bolin that you get that's pharmacy made, sharing. I got it from Turkey. I used to have pictures. I, I'd put up the pictures if I could find them on my computer. I don't. Um, and uh, that's supposedly the champagne of steroids, supposedly... In, our, in the unauthorized biography of Arnold Schwarzenegger, they say he used to rely on 600 milligrams a week of Prima Bolin. And uh, <clears throat> supposedly Bob Paris used to love it. Um, a lot of these really <clears throat> aesthetic physiques. And um, I'd never taken it, and I could never get a hold of it. And I'd heard that for some people it really works like unbelievable. Other people it's just kind of so-so. That it could be considered weak. It's the kind of thing that women use because it's safer, less side effects. So uh, I'd never taken it, but I had about 80 milliliters stocked up in that cache, <clears throat> that stockpile. <clears throat> so I thought, yeah, it would be great to take it. And right as I was thinking that, as I'm praying, my mind started to wander. I felt my muscle that I just, that was now healed, I literally felt it start to tear from the bone. And picture me now, arm of ground, praying a prayer, and now your mind starts to wander. You're thinking about your physique. Start the summer's coming up. You, then you resolve, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do another cycle. Right then, 
you start to feel that that arm tear that had just healed and I got so scared that I um, started praying again um, went from the prayer to the daydream back to the prayer and told ask God pleaded with God please don't tear my muscle again and I swore to God I wouldn't take steroids again so um, that there is miraculous in itself um, but but there's more um, so I got up I was in my home office I went on the computer right away I went to Google I searched for something I wrote I searched steroids are a sin assuming that if there's anything about it it would show up so uh, right away I was led to this website uh, musclemissions.org which is still up and uh, here's a screenshot um, okay so that's the website you can go to it if you want musclemissions.org and uh, at that website the author talks about how uh, he got caught up in you can go to it and read it yourself um, but uh, he basically talks about how he got caught up in uh, bodybuilding and then then steroids and then recreational drugs all the same way I did and I know that there are a lot of people out there who get caught up the same way and uh, if you're one of them that's good um, and if you're not then don't become one of them and uh, in it he talks about uh, how the word sorcery in the Bible uh, is actually translated from the Greek word uh, pharmakeus, which is the word that we get our um, English word for pharmacy, pharmacist, pharmaceuticals. And um, and as I was reading the website, all this stuff was making sense to me. Um, and if you think about it, a we always think of a sort of sorcery as something, some kind of ancient practice or a sorcerer or something. You know, if you picture Merlin or some old movie talking about the Dark Ages with sorcerers, sorcery, um, you picture somebody making a potion using maybe like um, plants and botanicals. And um, if you think about it, just about every pharmaceutical is derived from a plant source. Um, steroids are derived from a plant source, believe it or not. Um, I know one of the main um, sources for testosterone and, and anabolic steroids, which are testosterone derivatives, is the sarsaparilla root. You can look that up. Because they used to try to, you know, some bogus supplements were sarsaparilla, which was just, um, that would be snake oil, garbage. But um, the sarsaparilla root is basically, is basically the, the starting point. And then they'll, they take a molecule from that, use chemical processes to get testosterone. And then from, from testosterone, they use chemical processes to get the more anabolic derivatives like um, nandrolone, which is DECA, oxandrolone, which is anavar, methanolone, which is primable. And you know, if, if you know when you're when you're a recreational bodybuilder, you you, you learn these things. Um, I could tell you probably the names of all of them. Um, but you can just go online now and, and learn. Back then, before there was the internet, you would get um, like the underground steroid handbook, and you get sources that really weren't reliable. They were they could give you some insight, but they would give you bad advice too. So, um, but you can see how that makes sense. That the pharmaceutical industry, it is sorcery. Um, Cocaine, if you look at it, a coca plant, a uh, heroin, a poppy plant, um, everything is plant derived. It is sorcery. 
uh, it's just it's more it's more sophisticated now due to modern technology and um, it has an aura of legitimacy um, because it's you know in fancy bottles with fancy labels in fancy boxes with with you know long voluminous fine print inserts and you know uh, you know big farm is big business and it's just drug making and you know I realize that there are modern day medicines that um, are legitimate and are sold as medical cures but um, the ones that aren't um, first of all they, they come up with diseases that don't exist like depression um, and then people take antidepressants um, I used to be depressed and I found out later it was from taking aspartame aspartame was a chemical they put in diet drinks so um, I want to take a break but you can see how um, they, they poison you with one chemical and like aspartame and then um, try to um, sell you on a, on a cure with another chemical like Prozac, Zoloft, SSRIs, they're all SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, or something like that. So, um, and those things are all linked to um, homicides, suicides, um, um, when people go off of them. So, uh, you know, you've, you've got legitimate uses if somebody needs surgery, obviously, um, you would use a, a, a painkiller, an opiate-based painkiller, uh, to, 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 to anesthetize the, the area that you're going to go into, um, and, and the healing process when the person's in a lot of pain after the anesthesia wears off they need a painkiller um, so they have legitimate um, uses but it's it's really the um, pleasure producing chemicals mind altering chemicals um, which are not taken for medical conditions like um, all the recreational drugs uh, um, methamphetamines, uh, MDMA, ecstasy, cocaine, heroin, um, and obviously marijuana is, grows naturally, but so does every other plant that's used in a, in a drug. Coca grows naturally. Um, you know, it's the THC. You're smoking it. So, um, You know, even steroids, if you have, they have legitimate uses like, you know, wasting diseases. I'm sure people with HIV, that's how they survive, um, and anemia and things like that. But anyway, um, this now made me resolve never to take steroids again. And I was determined to sell the stuff that I had. And uh, one of the guys on one of these um, forums that I had, and probably PM or text or you know talk to you, you get to know these people you don't know who they are but you know them by their uh, nickname and you know their handle or whatever and then uh, their avatar which isn't you know just that's their their um, persona it's synonymous so there was one guy I, I, I PM them and uh, and one of the things I had said was that I quit taking steroids because it was sowing to the flesh. And that I didn't know I knew that that came from the Bible, but I just didn't know exactly where. So um, shortly thereafter, I'm still getting tempted, and I'm and I'm bombarded, um, uh, like a compulsion to take that prima bolin, and I wanted to take it. And I remember one night I was laying in bed, and uh, it just was just, you know, because you're, you're 
early on the devil tricks you, you think, you know, you know, when something happens, you think, oh, it's for a reason, it's God. Well, no, the devil can make things, odd coincidence, coincidences happen also. And it's not God, it's, it's the devil. Um, or you keep thinking something, thinking, you know, it's God talking to you. No, it's not, it's demons. So, uh, shortly after I had, uh, communicated with this guy on, uh, the forum, um, and said, out of, you know, just off the top of my head that the reason I no longer did it was because I was so into the flesh, uh, I resolved in my mind I was going to take the primable. Ah, you know, it's God telling me I should do it, you know. Um, you tell yourself, you lie to yourself, um, you fool yourself. So right when I was about to take it, I loaded up the syringe. And um, since I, I uh, was so paranoid about losing my hair, I said, well, before I even put it in my body, I'm going to apply um, this stuff that I just put in my hair, azelaic acid. I had like a roll-on applicator, like this one. Well, this isn't it. I don't use it anymore. Um, but it's a roll-on applicator. You would basically get it in the bottle, and then you buy, pay extra for the roll-on applicator. You had a spray or a roll-on applicator. It's a lot easier to put a roll-on applicator. You know, just kind of part your hair, roll it in, part your hair, roll it in, rather than spraying it all over your hair. Um, and as I was about to do that, it fell to the ground. It was a brand new bottle. I just bought it, $32. They call it $35, something like that. And I never used it, and it fell into the floor but it felt like it was pulled and it hit the ground and I looked and the roll-on applicator had totally come out and it was just just pouring out onto the floor and I had to pick it up and, and half of the bottle was gone and it was a brand new bottle and I realized that that was a sign just to show you, um, if you look at this applicator, it's very hard to get this off. Um, once you put it in, I can't get it out, okay? This stuff smells like shit. I don't take it no more. This is something else. Um, this is spironolactone, which has been in here for about five years. Um, smells like skunk. That's why you don't use it. Um, just so it sits there. But, um, all right, in order for me to get this off, I have to, there we go, I have to, uh, pry it open, and then, if you pry it open, or if you pry it open, you can get it close enough, see, see that now, see there's a gap now, so I can get my fingernails in there. Okay, okay, now you can see, see, see how that goes in there, but when you put it back in there, it, it's so snug, it has to be, because otherwise, when you broke, apply it, it would be pouring out of the seams, so when this hit the ground, it should not have came out the way it did, and, um, because it only fell five feet, but it felt like it was pulled, so I knew it was a sign, I knew something supernatural just happened, so, I was seeking a sign from God. I immediately, immediately went to the Bible, said, "Please, Lord, um, give me a sign. If this is you, show me." First page I open up to is I open the book. Um, obviously, you got the binding in the middle. You got pages on both sides, and on the right side, I saw the first page of the book of Ephesians. So, <clears throat> I thought, "Well, where's the sign?" Because on the first page, there's really nothing of substance, but usually Paul's introduction, his greetings and uh, salutations, you know, greetings um, when he's writing a letter. But then when I immediately look to the left, that if you know the way the books are ordered in the Bible, that would have been the last page of Galatians. And sure enough, I looked and it said, uh, Galatians, the last chapter is 6, verse 8. Um, it says, For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap decay and ruin, 
and destruction, but he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And um, that was my sign. I mean, how do you open a book as big as the Bible and the first page is the exact same words that you had used just short, a short while ago when you were explaining to someone else on a steroid forum how, you know, how and why you no longer take steroids. And um, uh, that was the second miracle. First, my um, tricep, I felt my tricep tearing after it had healed. Um, and then I had this literally pulled from my hand, the bottle, the applicator come out and just start pouring the liquid out onto the floor. Um, then I opened the Bible, asked God, please, if this is, if that was a supernatural thing, which it seems to have been, let me know. And there, the first page I opened to, um, was Galatians. Uh, six eight, um, reminding me exactly what I had told the guy. The reason I don't do it is because it's sowing to the flesh. Um, so I didn't take it. And um, the final thing I will say is that um, in since I had all that that big cachet, three thousand dollars worth, um, after my divorce, I was driving out to California, and I had my little dog with me. And um, I had a, I was pulling a trailer, and I had this little shoebox, a shoebox, the size of a shoebox, a shoebox full with all the stuff I had, I had amassed. Um, I had like, you wouldn't believe the, the ampules and the vials and the, the pills, and I intended to sell them to somebody because I needed the money. But um, in the Bible, Jesus says. Um, tempting is necessary, but woe to the one who does the tempting. It would be better for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and to be thrown in the middle of the lake. Um, because I guess the punishment for tempting other people is that severe. So, as I was thinking about that, halfway between um, you know the Midwest and on my journey to California, I was in, I believe it was in Nebraska, on an interstate, interstate uh, I stopped at a road stop. I went in the back to the trailer, I pulled out the box, and I threw it all away in a uh, in a garbage can, which, you know, at the interstate you see those big garbage cans that are, they've got those round um, uh, covers with the, the, you know, the doors that go in and out so that nobody would really pull it out or see it. I threw it in there, and then when I got back in the car with my little dog sitting in the passenger seat, it felt as though something had left me, like I, a demon had left me. Um, because I looked down and I saw one of the dog toys, which I had brought along. And one of the, the, the two dogs I, that I couldn't take with me, because they were really, they belonged to my ex-wife. They were hers um, before we met. And I, it tore my heart out when I was leaving to see them in the window, watching me and the little guy leave. It really tore me apart. And the only way I could do it and live with it was because I could no longer live with my ex-wife. And I could just say, you know, I didn't do this. She did this. She caused this. And um, when I saw the big guy, um, Max, he was big, you know. I mean, we definitely had a relationship. He was my, you know, buddy. They all were. I saw his hair stuck to the toy. And I just started bawling, crying, and uh, it was, you know, it was like that hardened heart. As soon as the steroids were in the, I had made the decision, and the steroids went in the garbage can, and I got back in the car, it was as if that demon was gone. He had to flee, and I know my heart was softened to where I realized, you know, I'm leaving those that I loved behind, and I just started bawling, it was just involuntary, it was just, you know, and, um, and I have not taken steroids since, it was probably the easiest sin to quit of them all, um, because you can stay in shape, 
it just takes self-control, self-discipline, um, training regularly and eating properly. And I, I'm happy to look the way I did in 95 or 96. I don't need a way to look the way I did in, um, 2006. Um, I'll show you again. But I would have never quit without God's intervention because uh, um, it makes it so much easier. Um, if you're taking, and I'm not trying to tell you to take them, I'm telling you not to take them. It's not worth it. Um, anything that gives you demons and affects your personality and your life in such a negative way is not worth taking. Um, but um, you don't need self-discipline if you're taking uh, steroids. Um, it, it could take me six to nine months to achieve what, if I'm, if I take a break from lifting, let's say I take a year off and that only happened maybe one time, um, it could take me six to nine months to even a year, but it really only takes about two months, two to three months where you feel, all right, yeah, you know, but, um, in a matter of weeks, you can get everything back with, if you're, if you're taking steroids and if you're taking growth hormone, you don't have to worry about your diet at all. You're not going to gain any fat. It's miraculous, but it's not worth it. It's not miraculous, but I mean, it is really that phenomenal. Um, if you if you're taking enough of it, you know, and you're taking the real stuff. Um, so there's a temptation to take it. If you didn't know one, it was a sin, and number two, that it that it it's it's uh, forbidden sorcery in the Bible, and it's uh, as any sin is going to cause demons um, to have access to you and to be able to harass you. So um, that was 2009, the last time I took them, them and we're in 2016. And um, you know, as I'm getting older. You know, it would be tempting to take them, and I know people are taking them now. When you see people, um, these actresses in uh, Hollywood and these tabloids, you see them, they're so skinny, it's almost disgusting. I suspect that they're dabbling with growth hormone. And if you don't have muscle, you shouldn't be getting your, your skin that thin. Because um, it... Like these women, it'll look wrinkly, and and women, um, to be feminine and desirable, should have fat. It, but it's just how it's proportioned, obviously, that 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 um, determines, you know, how attractive they are. But uh, for a woman to start um, taking growth hormone and burning her body fat, that's why these women, you'll see, they look. They've got, um, they look bony and wrinkly, um, unless they're muscular. Um, so, um, as they're becoming more and more mainstream, I'm that much more and more, um, resolved never to take them. It's just funny that, you know, when I was really, hiding what I was doing, um, those things were not as acceptable. And now, as they're becoming more and more acceptable, um, they're the last things that I would do, which is funny. Um, so that's miracle number six.
so good.